Hello and welcome to an all new Marvel cast, the Explosion Network's hub of all things Marvel, a place to talk about everything MCU and beyond. From Avengers and Defenders to Harold Howard and the Brainwatcher, my name's Ashley Hobley, the Explosion Network's resident Lucky Pizza host, and joining me today is also Kira Marchant. It is me, the big guy, here to podcast and talk about all things and everything. Yep. And also joining us, the Astonishing Tom Blight. It finally happened. We finally have motherfucking Mephisto, bitch. Let's go. <laughs> finally. Thank God. Finally. All this teasing. The big guy's finally here. Mm, the, yes. big the big guy. The big guy. <laughs> that does, like, make things way more interesting, potentially. The big airman. I don't mean McDonald's. Look, it's really Mephisto. weird. Mephisto. <laughs> it's really weird they chose that Hawkeye was the one to put Mephisto in, not... Um, yeah. It was not a swerve. They, they, had to keep but... us, they had to keep guessing. They're like... Loki, WandaVision, you think these are the mystical series he'll show up? Nah, we're just going to tease you. Hawkeye, Mephisto, big guy. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, so today we're talking about the latest episode of Hawkeye, episode five, Ronan, directed by Burton Birdie, written by Jenna Noel Fraser. A fallout nearly derails their partnership, but Kate makes a discovery that changes everything. Uh, Kieran, what do you think of this episode of Hawkeye? Uh, I thought this episode was great. I thought um, how they not only moved Hawkeye's own story, I think, once again, Jeremy Renner is like kind of taking up the all the acting he didn't do throughout the MCU and using it all in um, Hawkeye so far as a series. I think this is very much his strongest performance again after last week. Um, I really love how they brought Yelena in and how they included her throughout most of the episode without just, you know... Having her in for little minor spots, she's in there for a decent chunk, especially kind of her directly across from Kate in that conversation and then the back and forth. Um, I think it's super interesting, her point of view on it compared to Kate's and then also uh, Hawkeye's own mentality and Clint's own mentality about losing Natasha and everything that's happened since. I think it's um, done a really good job of kind of looking into that morality. And I'd like to say, I motherfucking called it and said... That uh, Eleanor Bishop called was the one that put the hit out on uh, Clint Buck. Fucking bam. Dylan, what do you think of the episode? I really liked it. I mean, um, as the resident Flush Pew fan, Stan here even, um, obviously seeing a lot more was great. That dinner table conversation was just a lot of back and forth awesomeness. And I'm like, cool. Can't wait for you two to be in the Young Avengers or whatever the hell we're doing because let's just see more of this. <laughs> Keep New going. Avengers, I awesome. guess, yeah. Yeah, let's um let's just keep that vibe going. Um the reveals were all cool. The Hawkeye, as Kieran was saying, you got you actually get to see that character have emotion and get a performance from Jeremy Renner. Him like stopping at the New York battle plate, I guess, or whatever you're Memorial plaque? sign. Yeah, plaque. Memorial yeah. sign thing. Yeah, that was a really great moment for him. Um I like how this also shows that Echo what I can't remember that character's real name. Me? No. Maya. Whatever. Maya. Maya. Um, I like how this episode also shows like she's smart enough to like she doesn't automatically let the emotions get the better of her and just choose not to believe anything Hawkeye um said to her. Instead she does a little bit of investigating herself there straight away, asking um the other dude some questions and you can tell that she's like, Yeah, you're full of shit. So I like how it shows that she's not like blinded by revenge, even though it seems like she is to a degree. Um yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I like how Jack just went off like a little bitch. And uh, a <laughs> yeah, good episode. You know, maybe, maybe Jack isn't innocent. Is my blind of thinking. What if everyone's a bad guy? <laughs> what if everyone is just a bad guy? I don't know. What if What if everybody's a bad guy except the guy you think is a bad guy? I mean, it would be a funny you, little twist, I guess. Like, Jack is perfectly nice and fine. It's just he in love with the wrong woman. You know? No, nah, I reckon I, I, he's still a bad guy. But I just think that it's potentially that she, like, her mom's actually the bigger bad guy. It, it, it would make more sense, like, if they were already married, then you could do, like, a whole twist of her. Like, you could do this twist of him actually just not being aware and she's planted these secret things in his accounts and whatever else. But they're not actually married yet, so they can't do that. So mm. I think he is still a bad guy, but he's on the lower end of criminal activity and she's involved with um, the big guy. <laughs> we can- well, I also think <laughs> that potentially... Um, she's just used him as a scapegoat with kind of Kate getting closer to maybe finding out too much information about her and everything, that side of things. She's used him as a scapegoat to be like, hey, Kate, look, you were right. Good job. But also we're going to 
just get rid of Hawkeye so he stops coming around and then you can just <laughs> go back to being my daughter and and, and live in just a Just come work life. for me, you know? Yeah. You could be a superhero just working in my security farm. I think you're a superhero. Uh, yeah, I really like the episode as well. I think it's interesting that, the, you know, they gave Florence Pugh and Yelena the, the Jonathan Majors treatment where he spent a whole entire episode monologuing. Uh, so she got pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, which is great because, you know, she's great. Not quite as much. He got an entire episode. Like, he was like, he <laughs> was, and it was like a constant monologue. Whereas I think, uh, her, her segments were a lot more banter and a lot more back and forth and, and kind of quirkiness to him, which I really yeah. loved. Absolutely. Uh, in, I love the opening of this episode, like of her, like trying to, obviously we've all seen Black Widow. So, you know, she's trying to cure all these black widows from whatever happened to the the brainwashing uh she comes all across one that didn't get brainwashed uh have a nice catch-up reunion as you do after you've tried to save somebody's life that when they didn't need it and then ruined a twenty thousand dollar rug uh and then you know she went to the bathroom uh and then she came out of the bathroom five years later uh so at least we know that she got she got snapped Snap. We've, never, we've never seen a snap in camera fully from one end to the other, which was, uh, we've, we've seen, um, I, 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 don't, I guess, the, you know, it, it wasn't quite pulled off seamlessly. Like there was a little bit of lag on the background. You know what I mean? Which I yeah, think was a purpose. I, I, I think, think that was done on purpose though. Mm, I think that was done on purpose though. as like a, mm. but the thing is, right. I guess it's because we as the audience see her get snapped as well as her reappear as if, like, our camera didn't actually leave instead of looking at it from her point of view, where she mm. kind of disappears. I guess where for- she's taking in her surroundings, so then they've changed. So I guess you could interpret it as her periphery vision, like taking in the mm-hmm. bathroom. But yeah, that was really cool. Like, her coming out and the, her friends, as- her kids and... Which is, I think, like, one thing I thought that was super interesting, the moment I realized she was about to get snapped, I was like, oh, shit. She gets unsnapped and then finds out that Natasha died, and they understand, like, her hate towards Clint, like, instantly. Like, I understand that. I think... A thousand percent. <laughs> the other thing about this is it further just mystifies the timeline. What year are we in? Uh, 2023, by calculation. Are we, though? Because apparently, yeah, it's, it's 20, apparently it's 20- Hawkeye hasn't been the Ronin for years. Well, yeah, he hasn't yeah. been the Ronin... Well, that's true. He would have been the Hawkeye Ronin in 2018. No, 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 no. 2018 was, was when they got when, snapped. Was when they got snapped. Yeah, so he would have been Ronin that year, though. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Oh, and, sorry, no. and then he was, he was still Ronin, Ronin after that. After he's that. Ronin, Ronin after five that. Five years later. So it's got to be at least a year or two since 2023 to be at that point. So he was Ronan from twenty, say twenty nineteen at the earliest. Then, yeah, we're mm-hmm. saying, assuming he stopped being Ronan, well, definitely stopped being Ronan when they start Infinity War, which is well, how, there's how many years? It's three years, right? Roughly five. five. It's five years. The patch between the snap and the the time jump is five years. Okay. The twenty twenty three. Yeah. And then we think. From the things they've said, that it's a couple years after that. So it's at least 2025. But it could be 2023 and they've just, like, mucked up some of the... Because it would make more sense that this is the first Christmas he's had with them. Well, I mean, you could also, like, it does... You have some leeway there. Like, the opening scene clearly says 2018. Yes. It could be January. It could be barely 2018. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, there, you get a little bit of... I it think, could be New Year's Day 2018. Then again, you know, we also have... We also have a... A lot of things up in the air in terms of timelines because of Spider Man. We don't know when the fuck the Spider Man timeline really takes place. We don't know, like, is there going to be something in uh, Doctor Strange that further marks up the timeline, or did the thing that Peter does fuck up the timeline? Like, actually, now that you think about it, this actually has worked out perfectly for Marvel because they've skipped the period in which coronavirus takes place. Uh, Assuming half the population's not here anymore, uh, you know, it doesn't spread as quickly. So it's probably not as bad. Although they've also super technologically advanced and still have a lot of smart people. 
uh, they probably would have solved it pretty quick. They have a raccoon that does rocket science and engineering. Like, you think well, I mean, they had Tony Stark during that period, not being Iron Man, so I sure should be able to do something. Free time. Free it's time. Really... He got bored. He's like, oh, I'll just cure this deadly virus. Mm. Interesting. Interesting, but still. <laughs> uh. Uh, yeah, so they, those two have an interesting conversation. Uh, I, I just love the, you know, her introduction. Uh with Kate going to her dilapidated apartment to collect stuff, um, you know, and she's just waiting in there, waiting for a while, cooking macaroni, uh, and then Kate throws a sriracha bottle at her, <laughs> only to catch it. Say hi. My Russian accent's terrible. Uh, I wasn't even trying. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say you had like a voice crack in there. It was, yeah. you know, I was, I was um, trying to be as high pitched as possible, but. Uh, you no, know, then they they talk about why Kate likes Kent Clint and uh, what you know her trying to understand why she cares about Clint, and that was yeah, it was a great conversation, having fun banter. Uh, she also wants to see the sights of New York City, very important. Uh, yeah, she thinks Kate is very very funny. Do you the interesting? So one of the motivations, or one of her kind of driving forces behind her disdain for Clint is him having to pay for the things that he's done. But she never seemed to have any problems with the Black Widow um, person at the start of the I movie, think she, start of the episode. It yeah. felt more than anything else like her trying to justify, rationalize. rationalize. Yeah, okay. okay. And I get the Julia feeling... Julia Louise Dreyfus told her, told her that Hawkeye killed her sister. And she believes that for whatever reason. I also feel like maybe this isn't the fir- like the first job she's done in a while. You know what I mean? Because obviously yeah, she no, was no, off no. saving the Black Widows. Yes. Maybe and she- also this the post- first thing she's done, she's come back. And then Although it's been a year potentially uh, since. It's, it's actually, I'd still like some explanation about the whole post-Black uh, Widow, like post credit scene. Where she had like a minder or something like it came off as, or like somebody who was like a handler or something. Like that's. I can't. Maybe I need to rewatch that scene because I haven't watched that after credit scene in a while. But. Google says Hawkeye's set in 2024. Okay. That's not bad. That'd be. That'd be about right. So it's been like a year. It says it's, it says it's set at Christmas 2024. Okay. You know, so, yeah, th- roughly, roughly a year after Endgame. Yeah, so, you know, maybe is Endgame a Christmas movie? We don't know. Also, we don't know the <laughs> passage of time in Endgame in terms of how long it took them to figure out time travel and shit. And all that testing that they did. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, so they have the conversation. You know, she reveals she's uh, <laughs> Natasha's sister. And she blames Clint, even though, you know, does Natasha save the world? You know, even though it was a team effort, come on. I mean, mm. I'm sorry, I was, I was Which... still just putting all that. Oh, for a second, I was get, about to get really angry about this timeline for the show for a second. I was just replaying it in my head, but I'm like, no, the show is right because it says 2018. <laughs> it then says. Five years later, which yep. is 2013. Yep. So, end 2023. Game, three. And yep. she gets 2023, sorry. So, Five years later is correct. She's split back, and now they're saying Hawkeye's twenty twenty four. So, yeah, so like it's all fine. It's fine. Maybe, yeah. It's fine. We don't know exacts, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Why has someone done an article for this year? Like I had to like go to weird pages. Like I Google like MCU timeline, and no, not a single motherfucker's done one of those. You know how you could just expect to see like an image, like someone's done with it. Well, I don't think anybody's. I don't think they're making it obvious. Maybe they that- wait till like everything's out and then they'll do. They need to get on this because at one stage the MCU was easy to understand. It's like when's this movie set after the last one? But now because they're all over the place, I it's feel like sticky. I need a bit more. Well, the thing was up until the time jump of that five years, everything kind of happened roughly. No, it's actually in- Spider. It's Spider Man's fault. I think that was the first movie where they actually had like a, a scene set prior. Because it flashed back to New York and then went ahead in time. What? No. Yeah, at the start with um, Falcon. No, um, what's his name? Happy. <laughs> no, the bad guy. 
Oh, Vulture. Vulture. <laughs> Fucking At the start, it shows Vulture. No, but we've had flashbacks before. Like, we had the start of Iron Man 3 where they jump back to 1999 and shit for the oh, yeah, turn of the learning year and stuff. Like, we've had flashbacks, but you've always thought, or it's kind of in the back of your head, that the MCU timeline is happening, yeah. like, kind of in parallel with our years. Yeah. And so, obviously, they had to fix something because they released um, the two-parter, which is, like, would create a gap anyway. And I guess they did the right... I think... That, I've always I thought they did the actually, right Actually, coronavirus helped that because it forced them to yeah. have a year off. Yeah. So, I don't know. But I still. just think <laughs> the current content, the current batch of content, so we go from WandaVision... Like, WandaVision this, Spider-Man movie, um, Falcon and Winter Soldier, all of this stuff, we just have no idea of chronological order of this stuff happening or what the WandaVision. order... Uh, several months after um, Endgame, I think was the explanation we got at the end. Falcon and Winter Soldier, I would, if I was to guess, I I would say it's possibly around the same, like a year afterwards sort of thing. Um, Loki, well, we know that's alternate, so it kind of doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, Yeah. We don't know when Shang-Chi took place. Shang-Chi... I mean, it I doesn't mean, really matter where it fits in the timeline. And it currently it doesn't, but we'll know the second that Captain Marvel cuts her hair. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's she a bit all back, over the so. place. Oh. Well, she no. go back, so you assume it, how long does it take her to go from the short stuff to long? Does she? Does her powers allow her to go long her hair faster? Who knows? Is but yeah, I think it, they are all over the place, and time is wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. Well, currently hold on, in the MC. <laughs> Hold on, everybody. Put your, another clue we're, we're forgetting. A piece of evidence. Banner still has a broken arm. So, that film takes place during the time period it takes to heal a broken arm. So, well, so, but, well arm, he didn't he's, break he's, it. Like he, he isn't like a broken arm. That is a... He, he had the power up. of the, the Infinity yeah, Stones. But I'm saying, the sec- if, if we see him with that fixed and another film, well, then you know that one's we after. Saw- shots of She-Hulk and it looks like his arm's fine. Yeah, so She-Hulk's definitely after this, after Shang-Chi then. I don't think, I don't think anything, (laughs) you know what, I think everything gets realigned during Doctor Strange, but I think the events are, like, Spider-Man for me is the big fucking thing, considering the events that's supposed to start that movie. Oh, uh, No Way Home? No Way Home. Yeah, not the original Spider-Man, No Way Home, because the events that start that movie are technically... Immediately after um, Far From Home. So, does that mean during Spider Man are we well, going to get a time jump? If you listen to Ashley Hobley's spoiler free review thing that he posted already on the this same podcast feed, he actually spoils. I don't think it's a spoiler, but there is a time jump, jump as confirmed by Ashley Hobley. Okay. The film start. Am I correct? See, I listen to it. You think, oh, you don't listen. <laughs> to listen, listen to anything he's not on. No, I fucking listen. Can we use that? Uh, there's a year time jump. Is that right? Uh, Roughly, yeah, you reckon? I would. After. I would say, and it's not really a spoiler because it's so inconsequential. There's only one hint. I would say the events take place at the same time as Hawkeye. Uh, yeah, because I was going to say so or around the same I, time. No, yeah, which I was about to say because technically that film takes place directly. The last film, Far From Home, takes place straight after Endgame, which is why I yes. always consider it a epilogue to Endgame, right? Yeah. And then you're and then listening to you be like, it's a year later. I'm like, okay, so then it's in twenty twenty four, it's around the same time. If it's not set at Christmas, it's set in October at Halloween. I fucking don't know. So that means okay, <laughs> so that means that movie has to happen before this movie. To it's explain set at th- it's set at Thanksgiving. I don't know. Well, look at- Ash knows, but it, I'm guessing it's set at Thanksgiving. No, no, no. That's I'm why old mate's going on holiday. That's why it's snowing. I would it's say. Winter. I would say it's. <laughs> I would say it's set after. After purely, Christmas. No. Yes. After this. After this. No, after this. Purely then, okay. because. I'm, I. I don't think it's a spoiler to say that you know they have a fight at the stat- new Statue of Liberty, which she brings but, up. There's something she wants to see. Yeah. But the, the thing is... Ah. Ah, so, you, the, so this is after that. No, I see what you're saying. Wink, wink. I I'm saying there's that. a new Statue of Liberty because it was ruined, am I right? No, because they were, fi- they were putting the shield on it in the trailer. 
Yeah, you can wink once. Oh, is there? There is no <laughs> winking. But but I guess the I guess the thing is that annoys me then if that's the case is that we've seen no reference to the Daily Bugle in this fucking world. We don't need to see it. Why's okay? Why's Clint reading the Daily Bugle? I don't give a fuck. Well, he fuck gets his you. news from Alex Jones. <laughs> J. Jonah Jameson is just everywhere. Is in the at least in the trailers and the kind of the epilogue to Far From Home. Maybe they're in a different part of New York, so. I'm walking here. It's a big. It's big, in, There's a big city. It's a big they're city. They're in yeah. Times Square. Times Square isn't that far away from like yeah, the and you think, Center and stuff. stuff. Uh, you know, maybe he, I don't Jerry Jeremy James couldn't afford Times Square. He did afford Square. Times Square. He did. It is where they are. The yeah, for an exclusive, not for like just generic stuff. And that was a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously. I don't know. It'll be All interesting right. to see if there is a. It'll uh, be interesting to talk about it tomorrow once we've you guys have watched. I was about to say we're, we're we're literally watching it tomorrow. We can yeah, soon to find out, discuss this. So, it, next thing I want to talk about uh, is obviously the conversation between uh, Clint and his wife. The clock, you mean? The watch. The the watch. Uh, you know. They're, it seems like this is almost Christmas Eve ish as getting the the things together. I'm going to rule out Dylan's theory from last week. What was my theory? I forgot. That she was mocking the. Oh, yeah, I'm ruling that out too. It's fine. That she was what? That she was mocking. She was a former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, the first mocking. Oh, girl. right. Okay. I'll just throw something out there. I'm just going to throw it out. I assume you guys are probably going to be on the same wavelength. I think they were both involved with the Kingpin before. Yeah. They were with the Kingpin in the early days. And they got yeah. out. That yeah. makes sense. That, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, I'd be down with that. I think there is connections in the comic books to Hawkeye and Kingpin um, previously as well. Well, so famously, yeah. King, Hawkeye was originally like a villain. Or like, mm. not a hero, you know? Yeah. And turned. So, that would... Makes sense. Yeah, I think Hawkeye being an enforcer for the big guy. Yeah. <laughs> Which I love. I love how they have this set of it. I love that, that all would add up to me. And you could even have, um, I, what's her name? What's his actual, her, like the character name? Like his wife. Uh, Laura. It, well, it's not, um, <laughs> what's it? What's, um, his real, the one he, the, the you know, in the series, Diana. no, whatever it is, like, I need you. <laughs> maybe that's who she was. But um, maybe she could have been wrapped up in that world too. Yeah, that would all add up. I feel like that, that makes sense. And somehow the watch just leads them to, would lead Fisk to them or reveal. Maybe they played their death off. Maybe he, maybe he, maybe Clint protected her. Maybe she was, uh, maybe it's all about her. Maybe, yeah, maybe it, she's I think, the person yeah. that um, yeah. he's, protecting. he's after, and um, sh- sh- he like faked her death and changed her name. But what if he, he did change her name? And what if she is actually um, whatever his love interest was from the fucking thing? That would be hilarious, actually. What from- if she was Electra? No, what's his love interest? Um, no, fuck. What, wouldn't from wouldn't that Daredevil? Be great? That would be yeah. No. What she had like facial surgery. <laughs> No, he just made her just like pretended she died or something like like well, faked Well, obviously, death. obviously, mm. the events of Daredevil are either somewhat canon or they're scrapped that shit and they're just like going to use the same actors. Oh, they're yes. pretty much co- no, they've already pretty much confirmed they scrapped that shit. They're just using the same actors. Okay, yeah, because they've well, obviously, Kingpin is Vincent D'Onofrio uh, because even if you couldn't tell from the shitty cell phone photo. They uh, credit him. They credit him in the titles. <laughs> yeah. I stayed to make sure in case I was like just seeing things. Or just to, there could have been an end credit scene. You don't know. Yeah. Surprising. Vanessa. There isn't. That's who it is. Vanessa, yeah. There isn't one. Yeah, remember Vanessa. So there you go. There's my new crazy hot take theory. She's Vanessa. She's Vanessa. Or that version of that character. Clint's hiding her from the big guy. Yeah. Could be. You know. Wait, did know. did like Hawkeye cut Kingpin's grass? Like, did he steal <laughs> Kingpin's girl? Like, is that is that? The I story don't. Know. Yes, it could be. 
Uh, or it could be like his sister or something like that. Clearly, you know. clearly the um, my theory about the watch being some kind of either locating device or like... Well, it won't be a locating device because if it was... It'll be something... Sh- yeah. But it'll be something related to their past, then, I'm guessing. Yeah, I, I, I'm down with this fact. I'm down well, with this it's, it, it'll be, like, leverage that they've got over the kingpin mm. to stop them coming after them or something. Potentially. 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 I guess we will find out next week. Uh, but, yeah, other stuff that happens this episode. <laughs> Obviously, he goes. Super- no, no, keep going, actually. I'll bring this up when you bring it up. <laughs> we get, you know... Hawkeye, he goes out. He get his hits the tracksuit mafia dudes with a message arrow. Uh, those guys talking about run MDC from D- run DMZ. Uh, Christmas classic. I don't even remember it being in the Royal Ten of Arms, but uh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. near your watch out. Uh, yeah, freaks out. It's a <laughs> message arrow. <laughs> It's a message for Maya, and they're very confused because they're, they're not Maya. When, they're not, Maya. not Maya. I actually had a jump scare because I was like, I took, looked away to take yeah. a sip of my drink, and the next second it happened, and it was very loud in my ears, and I was like, whoa. I think I think it would have been scary for everybody because it just came out of nowhere, even though I think we were all anticipating something happening. Yeah. I was expecting him to just be standing there in the middle of the road, like in the Ronin gear, like holding a bow or some shit like that. It just it happened. I was like, oh. yeah. uh, So they meet in... The car yard, which I th- was that where he murdered them all. I don't. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's like in like the a- building. In the building there, not yes. in the car park. Yeah. Like in the in the okay. office it's building. It's like a the mechanics. Uh, yeah. You know. And she's office. kind of rude. She doesn't come alone. Uh, so Ronan has to she pick doesn't. them off one by one. Okay. Here's my point. Why the fuck? When he's in the Ronan costume, is he just so much more effective than when he's Hawkeye? Like, because he's got armor. He can like he's like a little bit more <laughs> like he legit just becomes Batman on a scale that is almost unbelievable. He becomes a knight. <laughs> That's what happened. You wear black, and I was like, "That's the difference." And I was also like, "Okay, guys, I get it. You're in the the choreography for this section. You're enacting on the fact that Echo is deaf, so that she's all hearing impaired, so she cannot uh, hear some screams. of the stuff going on, the screams and stuff like that." But there's a point where I'm like, nah, some of this stuff she would have to be clued in on. Like, even, like, a quick movement over to her left, there's no way she's oblivious to what's going on right now. Like, it's She wasn't. Just... She saw him and then started shooting at him. Yeah. No, but she saw him after he was one side of the car yard, took three guys out, got to the other side of the car yard, took three more guys out, and then came back. Like To be fair, those guys were supposed to be, like, kneeling down between the cars, not being able to be seen, so... Those guys were yeah. doing a terrible job at that. Yeah, One they of them do was terrible. Like, Every time they're yeah, in the they're show, pretty... they do a terrible job. That's yeah. their job in the show. That's their job to do a like terrible it. job, yeah. yeah. Be... <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, then Clint, you know, and Maya have a cool fight. Brutal. Uh, Clint wins. Takes, unmasked himself, reveals that he is Ronan, uh, and tells her, you know, don't come after me and my family. Uh, and, you know, he got a tip uh, that her... Bo- from her boss, you know, that he or wanted- from an informant that worked for her boss. Yeah, which is obviously the other dude. We assume so. Yeah, yeah. So you know, she questions him. You know, it, it's all le- kind of leading to this final confrontation, which will be multi-sided. And <laughs> there is so much shit happening at this point in the show. To be honest, like next with, week's um, episode is going to be. Gonna be bananas. Gonna be yeah. absolutely bananas. You know, and then uh no, Maya gets a jump on Clint, like grabs a sword, uh, about to stab him, and then whoosh, arrow comes out of nowhere. Kate Bishop standing on the co- on the on a rooftop. You know? After sending leaving Clint like a gazillion messages. But the important thing is this time she didn't come in too early and make a dick of herself. She yeah. just watched. She waited. And, yeah. You know? She and she had a getaway plan. Yeah, Uber. Uber. Perfect. I, I love that nobody reacts to her, like, walking around one in a po- pink, uh, purple top, uh, but also with a bow and arrow. It's like... Oh, my man, God. How annoyed York, am I? Right? We, we didn't get to see their new suits this episode. That's definitely next yeah, episode. They te- yeah, we know we've got, they've got them, so, yeah. Also, can I say, Grills, top guy. He top is guy, cool. Grills. He's a nice mm. guy. I, I appreciate them 
making people who LARP and stuff cool. So. <laughs> cool and normal, whether it's like cool the first couple, time, first couple of times they showed them, they were fucking just wild and out there. And uh... he, What is it? He LARPs, he cooks, he fights fires. He's cool. <laughs> I don't we'll think they that. made them weird in that first thing. They 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 just it was looking weird because it's from Hawkeye's point of view. But like once he actually got into the camp, they made sure everyone like was normal. But it just from that out, it had that typical sort of shot the camera always does, and when they show LARPing where everyone's like doing their thing, and it's just like what the fuck's going on. <laughs> but <laughs> I feel like this this show's done probably the most normalization of LARPers that I've seen. In it's the anything. best since role models, right? It is way better than role model. <laughs> uh, yeah. Then we get to the end of the episode, and you know, they're all eat, chilling out, eating food, uh, and then you know, Florence Pugh, Texas, uh, Kate. You know that she figured out who hired her. It's Kate's mom, and includes a video message of the kingpin, video footage of the kingpin with like, her mom. So. Yeah, it said, hey, bestie, really loved our girls' night the other night. Um, this your girl? Yeah, this your girl. <laughs> <laughs> this your I mom? Appreciate, <laughs> yeah. I appreciate from the way the, uh, like, the, I guess the direction and the script writing for the text messages, you could just hear Florence Pugh saying those lines without, um, like, needing it done. Like, it was just written in such a way that you could see it. And I'm interested now to see... I want the. I'm interested in the confrontation between Hawkeye and Yelena now, um, even more because I didn't. I think luckily it's not going to be just an out and out brawl for no reason. There might be a little bit more time for conversation and talk and, and kind of break it down. And I and I think you know what, Jeremy Renner is you know building on his acting chops a little bit throughout the series. I hope he set himself up now to smash it out of the park with this scene about him kind of fully accepting and coming to terms with Natasha's death and what that means to him and what that means to Yelena and stuff. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, so what are we expecting from next week's episode? <laughs> it's like, there's like a lot that's supposed to happen. The big guy. There will be a confrontation. They will, I'm going to guess that Hawk, that the team is going to talk to Jax and Jax is going to be the one that's going to set Eleanor Bishop and Kingpin up to the foot for the fall with these guys. I think Jax is set up to be the one that um, kind of sets them up, and or is he set up to double cross them? Ooh, possibly, possibly. It's like, it's like, yeah. Maybe or, he's set up to double double cross them. Yeah, maybe he, mm. he's just in it for that Ronan sword. It was pretty cool. Hey, it fucking extends, and it doesn't even look like it's extendable. Like, it doesn't even have, like, the, the slidey bits on it that you can see would squish down. That was all the, favorite, the... Sorry, go for it. My favourite thing... This is, like, less what I want to see next episode, more like a cool tangent thing. But now that they've said, confirmed that Fisk was um, uh, not blipped and, like, was running around during that time period... You got the cool sort of setup to either flashback in another show or whatever else and do this whole, you know, when half the population was blipped out and you can show how he, you could do a storyline where that's the time period he used to really take a grasp on New York City or something like that. You could have a whole, um, you know, sort of, it's like Batman, um, Long Halloween, I don't know, some fucking shit. Yeah. We just, you could have a storyline set during the blip where all the criminal underground uh, underworlds well, of New York City just all begin fighting I mean, each other and Fisk ends up on top. You could redo, like, Daredevil's kind of Daredevil story or beginnings, at least, in the MCU. Yeah, during, during the that, blip. That, during yeah. that blip period. Yeah. That would be it's cool. like No Man's Land, but during the blip, but with Marvel. I relate everything back to Batman because that's what I've read more of. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, that could definitely be cool. You know, bring in, you know, what's his face as Daredevil. Through another series, I don't. Know, well, you've all, you've Daredevil just Plus. Him. Well, you've just seen him in Spider Man, so we I'm not that. going to take that bait. <laughs> I will neither confirm nor deny whether he shows up in that film. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
find out tomorrow when we talk about it. No way home. Anything else you guys want to talk? Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck was that da- was playing Daredevil in the new Spider-Man. That's movie? true. Yeah, th- maybe I, we get both wild. of them. Maybe we get I both. Mean, of we didn't get we didn't get all the new Spider-Mans, but they just brought in all the different versions of Daredevil. That's a <laughs> wild decision. <laughs> like, sure, let's go. <laughs> this is Ben Ben Affleck's fuck you back to DC. He's going back to be Daredevil. <laughs> all the different versions of Electra Sharp. It's just like a full thing. They're like, oh, this this is what you yeah. wanted. How bad? Yeah. Colin Farrell comes out of nowhere and just yeah, it's like a bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Anything else you want to talk about from this episode? I think. No, I, think I, I, will, I do it. like the the closing title card. I know if you both watched it to that, but did it say the big guy? No, yeah. it's obviously <laughs> it's got the silhouette of the kingpin in the background. Oh, yeah. has it? Haven't they called the Hulk the big guy a number of times? Do you reckon, like, somebody who didn't know about Fisk or anything, they're like, oh, he's with the big guy, and then they're like, wait, the Hulk? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We get in the master. You remember, remember the you master? were saying last week, though, Kieran, you are like, oh, I hope they you, they make him bigger or whatever else. So you're disappointed yeah. now it's Vincent um, I'm not disappointed. Like, it is what it is, but I do wish he was. You don't know. The camera can be very deceiving. Maybe the, she put a filter on. I'm not disappointed because... I'm not he did a great performance. He did a fantastic performance when he was... When, like, whenever he fought, when he had a fight in Daredevil, the way, like, between the editing and sound design and just Vincent Nof- D'Onofrio's acting, they always made sure, like... Like, when he fucking basically turned that dude's head into mush pie that first time you ever saw him get violent in the first season of Daredevil... I don't know if you guys remember, but... Um, like, I only remember the first season because it's fucking prime television and the rest was shit. But... Yeah, the first time you ever see, because the whole season, they're like, you know, this guy, you know, he's a bad guy, but you haven't seen him get violent yet. And he's always like cool, calm, collected businessman. And then there's one dude that pisses him off and he like slams his head a million times into this door or whatever else. And then later when he has a fight with Daredevil, it's like they always made sure that like you're like, this dude is built like a brick shit out sort of like you could just the way they he has shot the it. Stuff, so. yeah, yeah, it didn't matter if he looked at it. It's like, the way they shot it made it sound like he hit you and it was like, mm. You know, like it sounded like you got hit really fucking hard. So, yeah. I wonder if Netflix is actually happy they're doing this because you know people go back and watch Daredevil now. I don't think it, I, I, I wouldn't be. Care. I wouldn't be happy oh, if okay. ne- considering they cancelled it. <coughs> and now part of them was probably like, "Fuck, we could have had a fucking MCU Netflix show." going that had all the hype of the mcu but on netflix rather than disney i mean to a degree kevin feig feig however you say his name um must just sort of be slightly annoyed as well because it's like well why did you do what because marvel apparently he got annoyed about this stuff and so go to stories anyway where you know that'd well, be like, it's all jeff Loeb's I, fault right yeah, it's old Jeff. Yeah, because he was like, ABC, do your sort of thing. And then Netflix, do your sort of thing. And then it was like, is it connected? And Kevin Kevin wanted to make sure everything was, apparently. And then, every, and then you know, it was like, eh, nah, we'll work it out later sort of thing. And now after all these years, they're all on the same page where it's like, well, we've got Disney Plus now, so we want to make sure everything's, all our TV all shows are connected place, and yeah. properly on the same plate. It's like, well, you fucked up. You could have had this for you. You could have had like a daredevil built up for five years ago and you could have just brought him into the fold now. But Anyway. All right. Well, let's know what you thought of Hawkeye <laughs> this week's episode. Uh, by going to explosion.com slash Twitter or jump to Discord at explosion.com slash Discord. Uh, if you want to help us out here at All New Marvel Cast, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or on Podchaser or tell people about the show. And if you like this episode, thought it was worth a dollar, head on over to our next... Head on over to our coffee page at explosion.com slash support and buy us a coffee. Uh, so... Make sure you go out and watch Spider-Man No Way Home. Join us tomorrow. Sometime, whenever we get time to record and I get time to edit it. It'll be out. Edit it straight away. It'll be edited as quickly as humanly possible. Uh, But yeah, do that. And then join us next week for the finale. Crazy. Of Hawkeye. Do you think they're (laughs) going to resolve everything next week? Nah, season two. Season two. Is that going to... An arrow is going to come in at the end of the episode with the message thing, and then it's going to roll out and says season two coming soon. If they don't no. do a second season, it doesn't matter because you've got like all after these other the shows credits. They- Confirm season I think, two. No. I think this rolls into a Kate Bishop series. Like I think this rolls into like Kate's own thing rather than being a Hawkeye thing. Or does she take on the moniker of Hawkeye as her own? I don't know. If, they, if that's what they do, then they can just call it Hawkeye Season 2 and continue with her. But otherwise, as like you've got enough shows where all these characters can show up as 
anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Like that that I'm that's the thing for all these Marvel shows. I'm never going where season two because technically they're all just season twenty of the MCU anyway. You know what I mean? So it's like whatever is the next thing. It doesn't matter. I don't need a season two. It's just all one big thing. All right. Well, join us next time for another all new Marvel cast.